Hey, Forrest here. Nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these lawns. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. Ropaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coating solution. Welcome to the Lithia Ford of Boise pregame show from Bronco Nation News. As we get you set for the latest news, insight, and analysis as game time approaches. The BNN pregame show is presented by Lithia Ford of Boise. Check out LithiaFordBoise.com to view the full inventory of vehicles. Or check them out at 8853 West Fairview in Boise. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Now, let's head out and join BJ Reigns for the Lithia Ford of Boise pregame show from Bronco Nation News. Well, good morning and happy game day, Boise State football fans. Go Fi Stadium. A beautiful morning in Los Angeles and the crazy, wacky, hard to believe, improbable, whatever other words you want to come up with, 2023 football season for Boise State will end today right here in SoFi Stadium. Just an unbelievable setting for a college football game and an unbelievable finish to Boise State's 2023 season. Who would have believed we would ever be covering a game at Allegiant Stadium two weeks ago and now a game at SoFi Stadium here in Los Angeles today. The Boise State football team playing UCLA in the LA Bowl. Kickoff coming up later this afternoon, 5.30 Mountain Time here at SoFi Stadium. And uh, nice enough to uh, join me to talk this game, break it down for a little bit, our man John Mallory. You hear him weekdays, 95.3 FM, 1350 AM, the <sighs> ticket. He's up on a Saturday. We're talking Boise State football. It is game day, and uh, we got plenty to talk about. Get your comments in, your questions in, your thoughts in that ICCU YouTube chat, and uh, it's game day. It's game day ball game. Yeah, freezing in Boise, man. Woke up real cold, chill, frost everywhere, and then I see your B-roll there from SoFi. What a stadium that is. I've never been there, but everything I've heard, you know, Bob Beeler and you, have probably been to more stadiums than anybody that I know and talk to a lot. And Bob says, nicest stadium he's been to. And I think you kind of said the same thing, huh? Um, yeah, I, it, it knocks uh, SoFi, or it knocks uh, Legion Stadium out of the out of the water. Uh, this is a way better stadium than a Legion Stadium, in my opinion. It looks yeah. way big. It looks way bigger. Uh, it, it, uh, it is a palace, and the way they have it built, where it's right by the airport, so when you're flying in, you can't miss it. And then the way they have this kind of uh, – uh, I don't even know what you call it, like a area for just to hang out before the game, kind of a plaza type area uh, that is still covered by the roof. So the roof is actually much bigger than the stadium, the way it's designed. And, and uh, just, uh, yeah, it's incredible. And I just, I, wow. I, kept, think, I kept thinking yesterday while I'm watching, um, you know, just how are we here? How, how the heck am I at <laughs> SoFi Stadium covering this game? I know. Like, Nathaniel Wilder watching from the plane on the way to LA. Thank you, Nathaniel. Go, glad you got some good Wi-Fi there to watch us. Uh, safe travels. Um, but yeah, it is just unbelievable, Johnny, to think about this season, this team, and here we are covering the LA Bowl. I mean, the the you go all the way back to, and by the way, you, you think about it, they played Washington in their first game, who's now in the playoff, and then you go yeah. right down, you go right down the line, and they lose at the end of the game to UCF. They lose on the missed kick and the fourth down and the blocked kick and all that against Memphis. They lose on the Hail Mary against uh, Colorado State on the last play. And, and you just keep going down the line and the 0.1% chance. And then yet they they and they and fire their coach. And fire their, their coach. Wide, their wide receiver, star wide receiver transfers in the middle of the season. And they're going back and forth with the two quarterback situation and all this. And then uh, you just keep going down the line and then they find a way to win a couple games, the 0.1% chance to get them into the championship game. Then they find a way to somehow win that game. 
and here they are in the LA Bowl, where which Johnny before the season you just said, hey, you you get a chance to win nine games, win the conference, and win the LA Bowl against UCLA. I think ninety eight percent of Boise State fans would have signed up for that right away. And uh, here we are, man. What what a ride, and and uh, one final chapter to be written today. Yeah, I think so. I think they would. I mean, for me, and I've been talking about it on on Idaho Sports Talk, BJ. Boise State wins this game. Uh, the fans don't care that they have the five losses. I don't think they should. I think they should add that up and chalk that up to what could have been a disastrous season and then what was saved to meet the standard, right? Ch conference championship, check. Bowl game victory today, possibly check. Everything else seems to be riding smoothly with the program right now. And it's funny to think that all that did happen this year. But no, Bronco Nation, if they win, if they, they've already won their league, great. We're conference champions. This is a good season. Now the cherry on top beat a Pac-12 team in a bowl game in that stadium on a Saturday night and uh, get ready for next season. There's a lot of group of five teams JP that are I'm did I, call, did I just call you JP wow I don't know who that's an insult it is early in the morning mean, this uh, is like my 10 a.m meeting time I'm calling you JP <laughs> BJ uh, there, 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 there's a lot of there's a lot of group of five teams that aren't excited about the offseason you know who are we losing oh the portal I mean you threw in all the surprises of this season the biggest one might be Genties coming back what I mean, you throw that in. This is going to be such an exciting offseason, too. But, Genty, today is not the last time Bronco Nation has to even think or hear us talk about, ooh, is this the last game Genty is going to play? No, he's coming back. So, yeah, the craziest year, and it ends today. And and I like their chances. I know we'll get into the point spread, and and, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the curious case that is the point spread for the L.A. Bowl. But, you know, covering this team and – peeking over and seeing what UCLA's doing. BJ, I think they got a heck of a chance to win this thing tonight. And don't doesn't it just feel like with the way this season is going and how crazy this season has been and CJ Tiller making his first career start, it just seems like somehow, some way, even if you don't think it sh on paper should be this way, like yeah. I think Boise State it's going to find I mean, they're going to win this game. Like it just it's seems just like what it, this team it does. Would just, it would just be the, the the perfect weirdest ending to one of the most memorable Boise State seasons probably of all time if they find a way to win this game. And I think they find I think they probably will. And you mentioned the point spread. By the way, we're going to hear from uh, Rob Grankowski here in a minute. I had a chance to catch up with him yesterday with a couple of us down here uh, in LA. And so we're going to hear from Rob. And I want to get your thoughts on Gronk hosting this bowl game, Johnny. But uh, we can awesome. get, we, we can go ahead and get into the point spread here for a minute now. Our friends over at Circa Sports. I think I'm actually wearing my Circa Sports shirt today. I am. There you go. Uh, I circus. went with row paint. We got our, we got our, we got the sponsors going here. We got the circus sports shirt. You got our friends, our title sponsor over at row painting and we appreciate them. Andy Rowe and company, but uh, circus sports on their app that I just checked here in California now has the point spread. John Mallory at seven, yeah. seven points is the point spread here that uh, circus sports now has Boise state as the underdog by, you can see it right there on the screen. Plus seven, the money line now up to plus 200 plus 200 on the money line in this game. This spread, Johnny, was like two and a half early in the week. It is, and it was even like four and a half as of like yesterday or the day before. This yep. thing has shot up in the last couple of days. And now, I, I mean, usually the sharp money comes in at the end, uh, but that also sometimes means there's somebody that we don't know about that's not going to play. Uh, I'm not trying to put doom and gloom into Boise State fan here, but you know, is did, did Boise State decide, hey, let's just keep, make sure Genty's healthy all off season and this game ain't worth it or uh, I, I have no idea what this means. It might literally just be, hey, C.J. Tiller, the gamblers don't have a lot of faith in him. We're taking the Pac-12 team here in this game. I have no idea, but it is a little rare to see the line jump up that high in the last you know, 48 hours if there's no big injury or um, you know, who knows? Maybe they've be better just realized that, that uh, Taylor Green's not playing. I, I don't know, but um, it, it is a little odd. But, I mean, you're talking plus seven, Johnny. That would We're getting into legitimate upset territory here if they, if they win the game. I think it might be uh, for the for the FBS bowl lineup today. Boise State might be the biggest underdog on the card today, and I did not think that was going to be in play as well. BJ, you know this because you keep it. You keep track of the lines just like I do. Four or five times a season, there's a really peculiar line, and you just think, and you know, they really, really. I remember two years ago with Boise State. They go to BYU. BYU's ranked 10th. Boise State looks like dog meat, and BYU was only favored by five. 
And we were all going into that like this is a two, three, four touchdown win for BYU in this game. There's no way. What happened? Boise State won the game. And you're like, damn, like, how did they know? Like, what, what did they have there that they knew this was going to be at least a close game? Um, now, I'm not saying that that's the case with this. No one saw a blowout coming, but I don't know where. It is very, very rare. You go from minus two and a half to five in a few days. I mean, is there intel on practice where they're having a hard time? Ray, Ray, get out of here. They're, where, where they are having a hard time, like taking the QC exchange? Like how bad could it be for, a, I mean, true freshmen start every week in college football. This is not 35 years ago where it's the rarest thing ever. Kids play now. CJ, most kids play quicker than CJ Tiller. Who knows there? That's a big jump. I'd be shocked if Genty's limited. Genty loves this team. He loves his brothers. He loves the seniors. He loves Spencer. Look, I think, and this might not be a big thing, but I think it is for Spencer Danielson to go into the offseason 4 0, never lost a game. 4 and 0 Spencer Danielson career head coaching record. They're going to use Genty. Heck yes, they're going to use him and I can't see why that line is the offensive line the offensive line is more than healthy. I don't get it. That and again just to, for a Vegas perspective as you know BJ, lines don't jump like that in a matter of days unless something significant takes place and I'll tell you if you don't know the significance BJ, nobody does. And what does Troy Aikman have another game of eligibility? What, what's going on here with UCLA? I don't know. Yeah, very odd. And we'll see what happens. I, I agree on Genty. I'm sure he's playing and he's fine. Yeah. I'm just saying that's the type of thing that would make the line uh, jump up a couple of points if there was a key player like that that all of a sudden is uh, is, is not going to play. And it's crazy, Johnny, because you'll see times during a game day or the day before where I remember it happened with the Utah quarterback in one of the games. Like nobody knows if they're going to play and the line just starts moving and you're like, oh, he's probably out then. And then sure enough, he's out like the, the game. Somehow Vegas knows this stuff. But yep. um, we have been led to believe there are no injury issues with Boise State I don't expect anybody to not play but it is a very interesting that the line has jumped to plus seven and if you're feeling confident in Boise State winning this game Johnny you can get Boise State on the money line at Circa Sports at plus 200 uh, plus 200 now on the money line which for anyone that's not familiar with gambling I mean you you put down your hundred dollar wager they would give you your hundred dollar wager back plus two hundred dollars uh, yep. You would win 200 as a profit and get $300 back on your $100 bet if Boise State were to win this game. And that is a – once you get into the 200s, Johnny, that, like I said, that that's getting into uh, decent size, uh, you know, upset territory. I don't think a lot of Boise State fans would call this a huge upset if Boise State won this game. I don't think Boise State fans – feel like this would be a huge a huge you know game there's no way they can win this but once you get to seven once you're a touchdown underdog it starts to become a little bit of a it's not you know at least in Vegas's eyes it's not necessarily a, a coin flip type of game so we'll see what happened we'll see why um <clears throat> why this is the case uh but uh, yeah plus seven BJ, now the, the, sports. the the only thing I could think of would be they think that the front seven for UCLA and they have been terrific against the run this year albeit without <clears throat> some of their better players today. They've been terrific against the run this year, albeit their defensive coordinator is now across town in USC's building, not even with the program anymore, albeit you know they've been tough against the run this year. Maybe the thought is you know it's going to be really difficult to get Boise State's running game going. Genty, Halani, the terrific offensive line that Boise State brings to the table. Tight ends like Matt Lauder that are just dogs in the running game. And they think that, you know, they're going to put as many as they can up close, take away that run. And when C.J. Tiller has to throw the ball, it's not going to work for them. I just, I don't see a team slowing down Boise State's running attack. Maybe they will, and good for them. I know they're working hard to try to stop it, but when you have a healthy Genty, healthy Holani, healthy offensive line, BJ, we've seen this, this running game all year. I, I, I don't see that being the case, but that's the only case I can see it being. Maybe they just think that UCLA's defense is going to completely shut down this rushing attack, and if you do that, Boise State will be too limited to be able to win the game on the arm of C.J. Tiller. Jake says uh, QB going to be an issue today uh, for Boise State, so he's not necessarily it may be. sold on Tiller. Um, it may be. Let's see. Free, feed Halani the rock. Keep Genty healthy. See what we have at quarterback and send these seniors off with a W. 
Uh, Clint wants to get the tight ends involved today. Uh, Sam Windsor, Air Force, also had a top 10 run defense, um, and they they ran for, yeah. what, 300 yards against them or something yes. close? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Heavy dose of the Wildcat with Genty and Halani. What do you think of that? Um, maybe more than you're typically used to seeing it. Hundred percent. Now, be what honest, I think I mean, they would do. Yeah, I would say. Well, I was just going to say, Tony. Uh, sorry Halani, to cut you off. Go, yeah, go for it. Sorry, we're on the delay here, so it's hard to get it. But uh, what I would say is uh, you're not going to need C.J. Tiller to throw the ball 30 times. Like, you are going to be able to lean on the running game. But there's going to be some third and eights, some third and sevens. Yeah. Like, he's going to have to complete some key passes in this game for Boise State to win. Absolutely, and hopefully he's ready. You know, he's he's played all year in practice. He's he's he's, he's watched the kids ahead of him, Mad, Mad Dog and TG10. Um, he's a really sharp kid. You know, you've interviewed him. We've interviewed him. Like he, he's, he's got that quarterback personality, dude. He really does. Like if this kid hits and pops in this town, he is going to be a mega star because he is mega marketable. Just after this game, you'll be interviewing him. If they win, if he plays well, it's going to be tiller time in this town. I think moving forward. And a lot of people will probably be rooting for him to be the week one starter next year. That's if. He plays well. To me, that's the biggest thing. Otherwise, other than just getting to watch Ashton Genty play football, which is just a thrill for me. I love running backs and I love him. CJ Tiller to me is the storyline in this thing. I want to see how how he's going to come in and play. Because if it is a circus McGurkis and the poor kid just isn't ready, um, UCLA's defense is going to be ready. And and, and maybe that's the difference in the game, BJ. But uh, a seven point spread. You know, holy smokes, that's a lot. That's a big spread. <clears throat> Speaking of uh, Circus McGurkis, let's get into some of the extracurriculars going on this week, Johnny. Uh, obviously, we had the pep rally last night. This was obviously a, a great time down there right outside SoFi Stadium. You got the Spirit Squad. You got the band. Nice. They were fired up to make the trip down here, Johnny. Right outside SoFi Stadium, you had the uh, pep rally last night. Nice to see the uh, band make the trip. You had the Spirit Squad there as well. And you know who else was there, Johnny? Our man, uh, Rob Grankowski, doing a uh, dance-off against the mascots. Let me see if I can cue up the proper video here on, uh, on Rob. But uh, here comes Rob. You know, he's getting these uh, areas on stage. Are you ready? to battle it out versus those mascots right over there. Oh, brother, am I ready? I'm going to take them down. Give I'm it sure up you're not Rob, surprised, Johnny, that uh, Rob Gronkowski was bringing the energy. He's got a mic over there. Not sure Get if he's been drinking for, for a few Rob, hours already or what, but Rob was fired up, ready to go. He's done a really nice job uh, embracing this uh, opportunity to host this bowl game. And uh, it was kind of a cool side story. Last year was Jimmy Rob, Kimmel. Got a mic over there for We're you, giving buddy. Rob some money to hang That's out here and do some Bronco. things. Let's Joe, listen in for Joe, a minute here to Rob Frankowski. Right Buster Bronco, what's up, my man? How you guys doing? Welcome to the Starco Brands LA Bowl, AKA the Brock Bowl. Now, we are officially changing the name. UCLA, how you guys doing over there? Boise State, how are you guys doing over here? You feel like you're chance. How are you guys doing over there? Boise State? Yeah. I love Boise State. I love UCLA too, because you guys are going to the Big Ten next year, so I can cheer for you guys. I'm an Arizona Wildcat, I know. Boo me real quick. I still love you guys for being here. I appreciate everything Chip Kelly has done. I always admire him as a coach. But thank you guys for all being here. The game tomorrow will be very exciting. And if you guys are trying to get a little tipsy tonight, go over to the back to the Whip Shots Wonderland back there. Let me tell you, very, very tasty, that's for sure. But we'll see you guys tomorrow. Be loud. Be proud for your school. We're going to see a great game between Boise State and UCLA football. And... Let's rock out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. What do you think of Rob Grankowski out here hosting the game here, Johnny? I've been dancing a while, so I'll give it my best shot. Though I'm also going to call up. A I love it, man. Myself. Such a fun deal. He's so positive. I mean, everybody likes Gronk, even if you didn't like the teams he played for 
or any of that stuff. And college football may be on <clears throat> to something right now, or should I say the LA Bowl may be on to something with a host? Like, can't you see a bowl game five years from now hosted, hosted by the Kelsey brothers, right? Like this might be a new thing, a nice way to make some cash um, and host a bowl game, come to the festivities, have fun, shake hands, take pictures. I mean, maybe, maybe this is a, a going to be a new thing where some of, some of these bowl games add a little spice, find a cool, fun celebrity, bring them there to, to get the party going. Now here's the uh, announcement of the winner. I don't have the actual video of the dance off. I guess I could try to get that in here in a minute, but it was a vertical, uh, shot it vertically and can't put it in here, but here's the announcement from Gronk of the winner of the dance off. I want that dance contest, Gronk. I'll let you be the judge. Who's saying UCLA? Johnny, that is another side story we'll get to. He that is taking on awesome. blitz in a race, but uh, Rob Grankowski, man, he's uh, he's uh, having some fun. He had his brother there too, and uh, I am looking forward to seeing him race uh, blitz today. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. Um, he says he's gonna try to distract blitz, right? Didn't we he have say that? that we have you? that soundbite. We can get to here in a minute. Yeah, we do have that a soundbite. bone, a biscuit. I don't know what's up Gronk's sleeve there. They shouldn't have had Gronk pick the winner. Don't separate the Gronk. Don't get one side, one fan base like, oh, Gronk didn't pick us. Don't put Gronk right, in that position as the bull host. Come on, guys. By the way, he uh, tries to hook his brother up with one of the band members here at Boise State. We'll, we'll play that clip real quick. Uh, let's see. But here we go. Oh, we got a vertical BK. video. Here we go. Gordon, Hold on. Gord, you like band ladies? He sure does. He does not discriminate. He does not discriminate. Dancers, cheerleaders, band numbers, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so here's here's actually the dance off. We'll just show you the first 30 seconds and then we'll move on. But uh it was a lot of fun, it was crazy. Rob Grankowski in the house last night. My night. nephew's joining. All right, we're gonna have this the music whenever you're ready, Gronk. You want your nephews to join you first? How long is it going for? Just 30 seconds. 30 each. Second yeah, dance yeah. Off? All right, let's do it. Take it away, Gronk. All right. This is what you need. Look at the dance moves here, Johnny. I love him. I love him. Five, four, three, two, one. Give him some noise, everybody. People are putting some other ideas on who they want to host bowl games. We got Joe Rogan on here. We got some other ones. Yeah. I, 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 I we'll hit this out of the park, man. He's the perfect guy to host a bowl game. He's uh, he had his chain on. He's having a good time. Perfect. It's kind of a nice little side story. Oh, here's Buster Bronco. We'll watch this for a couple minutes. Buster was bringing in a little bit, Johnny. I didn't know Jay Tuss had those kind of dance moves. <laughs> he fit, he fit, as we said, he went with... Buster should have won. He didn't. But uh, I think Jay, Jay was legitimately... He was a little beefed on that, that Buster didn't win. He was a little upset at Gronk. Like he, he was questioning why Gronk would pick, uh, the Bruin. A lot of people were, I thought that was funny, but yeah, Gronk, uh, you know, such a fun dude. It would, he would have been a fun guy to play with. I'm sure there's very, very few teammates that played with Gronk that would say, oh, that guy was phony. That guy, it wasn't any fun to be around. So, uh, 
really cool deal. Now, BJ, yes, go win the game. You know, go win the game. What are we? Well, I want to hear from Gronk first. I want to hear from Gronk first. I want to hear from Gronk first. Can we hear from Gronk? One more Gronk. No, no, I want to hear the. It's, this is like about two minutes, but it, he did a quick press conference. They hurried us off. We only got three questions. We asked about yeah. the game. We asked about uh, his relationship with Shea McClellan, who he didn't even know went to Boise State till Jay Tuss <laughs> told him. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, race and blitz in the race. So here's a quick comment from uh, at the press at the press conference yesterday after, at uh, with Rob Gronkowski. This came from Boise here. We heard you out there pick Boise State. Tell us about your thoughts on Boise State and yes. Boise. And- actually, yeah, that was my first pick of the week. Actually, uh, for the LA Bowl, Boise State, UCLA, and uh, that was actually the first time someone. Uh oh, it froze up on us. You there, Johnny? Was that the McClellan question? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, it froze up on us. What happened here? I don't know, I BJ. All right, well, I'm gonna have to do try you that again. To, BJ, bad, you need to hire hosting. it. Bad hosting, hire a tech man. To move, you got to pay for all of them. You know, hire your own tech, man. And you need a big Bronco Nation news van that's wrapped. The BNN mobile. You need a lot of this stuff, BJ. All right, we're going to give it a second to reload here. Uh, but, Johnny, uh, again, Circa Sports has the line at 7, plus 200 on the money line. UCLA is without a couple players, Johnny. Um, UCLA is without their star DN. They're without a starting safety as well. One of their main tight ends is also out. Um, but uh, most of the UCLA players should be out there playing. Let's try one more time here uh, with uh, Gronk, and uh, if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll move on. But uh, here, here's Gronk. My first pick of the week, actually, uh, for the LA Bowl, Boise State, UCLA, and uh, that was actually the first time someone asked me who's gonna. No, All right. party no. fail. I don't know what no. happened there. My bad. DJ, have, no, come on, have, man. We don't have Gronk today. We don't have Gronk today. Well, you Apologies. saw Gronk dance. I think that's good enough. I think you gave Bronco Nation enough Gronk. I think they're good. Okay, they probably are. Uh, what about uh, Riley Smith interviewing uh, DJ Shram? We can can we give him that at least? Maybe I haven't I haven't seen that uh, one. That is a new one that uh, has not been put out there yet. But uh, Riley Smith caught up with DJ Shram. I'll I'll get that loaded. We'll play that here in a minute. But Johnny, uh, I also don't want to keep you all. I know you got a, a lot going on. A busy Saturday for you. Mm. So uh, yeah. give us your uh, your your before we play this interview and, and uh, we'll we'll handle it from here. Give us your your final thoughts, your take on this game, this matchup, and. And uh, just, uh, you know, what, what you're feeling about this game and the impact it would have on this season and, and this program moving forward here. It feels like a really big bowl game for Boise State. A, an opportunity to win, finish 9-4, and four, finish on this streak, finish with this coach, finish knowing you're running back. One of the biggest star players you'll ever have here is coming back to run it back. Uh, the offseason quarterback competition, what they do in the transfer portal. I mean, one of the big swings and misses, uh, unfortunately for Andy and his time, was the transfer portal. I mean, uh, the, the the best portal gets, BJ, uh, in the Andy Avalos era, um, I would say Cade Bearsford, right? I mean, he's an all-league lineman. Good for him, and he's been a hell of a player. Um, but he hasn't – Andy hasn't – they didn't hit the portal. Maybe they will better uh, this offseason. So that comes into play for me. And just the opportunity to beat a UCLA. I mean, they haven't played for, for a long time there, too. And the motivation feels like it's there. And I think the biggest thing for me in, in covering this team this year, this team really likes each other. You know, at least the core players of this team. And this has got to suck, but they don't want it to end. You know, they're probably having breakfast right now or going through a meeting. They probably had breakfast already. They're doing their 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 team meetings, their, their position group meetings. And they're saying, this is the last time we're all going to get to do this. You know, we're sure as hell not going to lose in this opportunity. And yeah, they're saying that in UCLA's meetings as well. But I don't think UCLA would be as close as this team. I don't know if I've seen a team as close as this team. They just don't want it to end. And I think you're going to see that on the field tonight, and Spencer's going to have them going. I think Boise State wins this game outright. I do. I'm convinced. Look, there's a reason I think the Mountain West is 2-0 and versus the Pac-12 in this game. And this, to me, feels like you know, kind of one of those situations, too, where you kind of had a Pac-12 team kind of limping in. Now, this isn't their dream. This was not on their list of goals at the end of the year to stay in town and play in a, you know, pretty much empty stadium against a group of five team. This was not in their plans. And then Boise State flipped that. This was like the second best thing 
you know, best thing would be the New Year's Six Bowl at the end of the year. But after that, what's the next best thing for Boise State? Play in the L.A. Bowl. Get to beat a Pac-12 team. Win your league. Boise State checked all those boxes. I think they check another one tonight, and I think they will be motivated, highly motivated, ready to go. And, B.J., for me, George Halani, Ashton Genty behind that offensive line. That is going to be the key. I think Bush is going to scheme it up, get the running backs the ball in space. You were talking about the Wildcat early. You were talking about that. And I think I could see George Halani. And by the way, UCLA is a really good team. Well, then they're not playing in the goddamn L.A. Bowl. All right, Uh, Henry Hickey, really good teams don't reach the L.A. Bowl from the Pac-12. I'm sure they're, they're very respectable but they're a mid-level Pac-12 team. That's what UCLA is this year. That's who goes to this bowl game from the Pac-12. Uh, all due respect there. Now back to my Wildcat. Sorry, I digress there. The Wildcat. I like to see, let's, Halani at the quarterback position of the Wildcat with Genty adjacent, right? Maybe you can get some old school read options where you have Halani and Genty uh, making the decision. Halani with the read defensive end comes in, keep it, vice versa, give it that type of deal. Maybe you see some of that, or maybe you see Ashton Genty as the wildcat operator with George Halani next to him. I think Bush is going to dial that up this week or tonight. I think we're going to see that in Ashton Genty. I mean, as long as I'll say this, as long as he gets t- the 20, as long as he gets what 20 touches, BJ, I, I, I don't see, I've never seen him bottled up. So if Ashton Genty has a game and every running back does, but if this is Genty's 19 carries for 24 yards game and they just bottled him up, tip of the cap, I've never seen that. I think if as long as Genty gets his touches there, you're going to see the stiff arm, you're going to see the leap. You're going to see the truck. You're going to see the juke. I mean, the guy's got so many tools in his tool belt, and he'll use multiple tools on one run, right? You'll see a stiff arm. Then you'll see a leap. Then you'll see a spin move. Like, the guy is a human joystick. I love watching him play, and I I just think he's rolling right now, BJ, Halani as well. Boise State wins this game behind that offensive line, and I think it's a love fest, and I look forward to uh, your coverage at the end of it. Hey, Johnny, uh, I went out there for a second. Can you hear me all right right now? Yeah, I'm right here. I'm on the uh, bad Wi-Fi internet here. But uh, by the way, our man Andy Rowe, Rowe Painting, uh, he checks in, loves your shirt, man. Show off that Rowe Painting shirt there. Love you know your game day shirt, Johnny. You know what they are. LFG. Lift it up a little higher there. Let's see the uh, let's see the quality Rowe Painting shirt we got going Remember on. when they jersey popped, BJ? What, early 2000s yeah. when you'd pop the jersey? I bet yeah. you do that in high school. You know it, Johnny. Check out Row Painting. We appreciate Andy Rowe, our title sponsor. They're sponsoring the uh, RowPaint.com studios for Johnny and them at KTIK and our title sponsor here on Bronco Nation News. So we appreciate Andy Rowe and Row Painting. All your painting needs, industrial, commercial, residential, you name it, get out there, R-O-E-Paint.com. He's now an actor now, Johnny, with the commercial with Coach Rice that we've seen. So uh, Andy's you. the best, man. He is. Andy is the best. Appreciate you, Andy, and hopefully folks will uh, consider row painting for all of their uh, painting needs here in the future. Johnny, I got some other interviews, some things I'm going to play. I'm going to keep this rolling. Uh, Jay Tuss might even make an appearance here. We're going to let you roll, and we appreciate Can I get on with Tusty? You're trying to stick around? Nah, they probably don't want me. You can get me out of here, man. I'd love to be on with Jay and talk to him about yesterday. You said he was just fawning over Gronk. You said that on Idaho Sports Talk. I, I was, uh, you said Jay of, was just like a little puppy following Gronk around. I did not say that. You said who was freak, who was uh, fanboying most about, uh, and you were wanting to know about the players, and I just jokingly said Jay. Uh, we, we all were. I also said we all were. We all were. I was I was right there. I mean, I just put three minutes of video of him dancing up there. So I, I, I probably love it. I was probably fanboying more than anybody over over. Hey, you guys, uh, you guys flip me stuff all the time on this. I watch Jay's appearances. He's always jabbing at me. So if I can get back at Tust a little bit, I will. So I'll let him anyway. know. I'll let him know. I'll let him know that uh, we said that. But uh, we appreciate, appreciate you, man. It should be a fun game. You guys will have the po- your post game show, correct? Yeah, Bronco game night, final edition of this season. Prater and myself uh, on our sister station there, KBOI, and uh, we'll take your calls, and uh, hopefully it's a nice festive night. Nobody wants you to leave. They're saying, stay on, Johnny, stay on. 
Uh, if you get ta- to if you get tossed, I'll come back. I, uh, we'll see. All right, we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. But I appreciate you. Uh, I do want to play the Riley Smith interview with DJ Shram. Don't go anywhere, folks. Maybe Johnny will stick around. Jay Tuss wants to see that. We're having a lot of fun, but uh, we got to take a quick ninety second timeout. We're back in ninety seconds. Let the afford a Boise pregame show getting you set for Boise State in the LA Bowl against UCLA. Don't go anywhere. Back in ninety seconds. All Bronco Nation news broadcasts come from the Cutwater Spirits Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of premix premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Our title sponsor is RowPaint.com. For all your commercial, industrial, residential painting needs, check out RowPaint.com. Don't forget about their concrete coatings. Transform that ugly concrete slab on your back patio in your garage in just one day. Contact rowpaint.com for a free estimate today. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics and our title sponsor at Bronco Nation News is rowpaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union has been helping members achieve financial success for more than 80 years. There's an ICCU branch on almost every corner, but the closest is in your pocket with free e-branch mobile and online banking. See why more than 500,000 members love ICCU and join one in four Idahoans by making the switch today at ICCU. Since 1984, Ridley's Family Markets has prided itself on being a hometown food and drug store that employed value members of the local community. Ridley's Family Markets has 13 locations in the state of Idaho and many more in the surrounding states. Download the new Ridley's app to your smartphone, get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line, and find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Former Bronco Matt Bauscher is once again the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. No home is too big or too small for Matt and his team. Let them fulfill all your real estate needs at BauscherRealEstate.com. Back here on the uh, Lithia Ford of Boise pregame show. We are live in Los Angeles getting you set for Boise State and UCLA in the LA Bowl today. If you're one of the 205 watching us live, we appreciate you. If you're watching this later today ahead of kickoff, we appreciate you as well. Riley Smith's doing some NIL deals with us with Element Fencing. We really appreciate Element Fencing, and Riley Smith's been doing some behind-the-scenes interviews with some players and coaches, this new NIL era allowing us to uh, pay Riley Smith to do some uh, behind-the-scenes content for us at Bronco Nation News. It's courtesy of Element Fencing, family-owned local fence company specializing in residential and commercial cedar fence, decks, outdoor rooms, sheds, pergolas, you name it. Check them out, elementfencing.com. We are super appreciative of them for helping make this possible. They bring you this interview, Riley Smith and DJ Shram here on Bronco Nation News. Guys, this is Riley Smith here, and uh, thanks to Element Fencing again. I'm able to continue to be a correspondent for BNN News and keep interviewing players and showing you guys what a great time we're having. I'm here today with my fellow cat. All right, something's going on with our uh, thing here, so I apologize. We're going to have to figure that out. I guess from now on we can play no more videos for more than 20 seconds. So uh, I don't know what's going on with that. I really apologize. We're uh, having, uh, I guess, just one of those mornings where the laptop doesn't want to work as well this morning. So uh, apologize for that. We have, we'll have. we see if I can get that figured out here. we got plenty of comments coming in. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Genty should be converted to quarterback. I don't think that's happening. Uh, Riley Smith is awesome. Yes, he is, and we appreciate uh, Element Fencing. Uh, not sure, again, what happened with that, so I apologize uh, for that. But uh, get your score predictions in. We need some score predictions. The closest one's going to go home with a $20 gift card to Taco Bell. So if you've got a, a score prediction for the game today, let us know, and um, we'll see what we can do in terms of uh, gift cards and things. But I know we have a $20 gift card to Taco Bell that we can give away to our uh, our whoever wins the uh, closest score prediction. So got to get the right team right. You got to have the total. And uh, whoever can do that, we will uh, we'll get that on there uh, here in just a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can add the video clip to, to this one maybe. Uh, let's see if we can do it this way. And I apologize. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to try to uh, upload this Riley Smith video again and uh, see if there's any kind of issue. I, I re-uploaded the Gronk one as well. We can try that again in a second. I don't know if that's going to work. Probably not. Uh, but uh, dealing with technology here, and we'll do the best we can on the fly here on a live show. So uh, apologize uh, for that. Uh, let's see if we can uh, – let's delete this video here. We'll try this one more time. Riley, for the show, we'll, up, we'll upload it this way, and maybe it'll work a little better if we can get it uploaded into the system this way. So, again, Boise State in the L.A. Bowl, a 4.30 kickoff here in California. It's 5.30 is the kickoff time in uh, 
Boise, if you're in Mountain Time Zone. Uh, we're going to try this one more time. Riley Smith uh, with DJ Shram. And again, Element Fencing, we appreciate this. And, and folks, I appreciate you for uh, sticking with us with some of these uh, technological, uh, I don't know what's going on with the videos this morning, but we're going to try one more time here in just a second when this video finishes uploading. There's two ways we can bring it in. Let's try one more time and uh, let's see what happens here. What's up, guys? This is Riley Smith here. And uh, thanks to Element Fencing again. I'm able to continue to be a correspondent for BNN News and keep interviewing players and showing you guys what a great time we're having. I'm here today with my fellow captain and our star linebacker, DJ Shram. And uh, we're just gonna ask him a couple questions. I'm gonna start off by saying, as this is your last game as a Bronco, your chance to rep it, what are you most excited about doing tomorrow? Uh, just most excited about doing our best to get a win. Uh, going out there one last time, gonna put all out there for uh, Bronco Nation and all those guys in the locker room. And I know that we've been playing in some cool stadiums throughout the whole year, especially in Allegiant Stadium last week. Now that we were able to view the, the SoFi Stadium, how cool was that to be able to go in and see that stadium? It was super cool. I mean, that thing is massive. Uh, I mean, it's all state-of-the-art stuff. Uh, being a Chargers fan is a little extra cool for me, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, no doubt. And he's going to ball out tomorrow, and it's super exciting stuff. We're going to bring bring back that victory and then uh after that we're done as boise state players but what's next for dj shram you're a su super successful dude so we're excited to see what you do next after this uh looking for engineering jobs so uh if anyone has some openings let me know <laughs> yeah if you want a leader and someone that's gonna ball out for you in the workforce <laughs> hire this man right here super excited for him and uh what is the biggest thing that you've been excited about or one of your favorite memories is being a bronco uh it's definitely winning that championship a couple weeks ago. Uh, that was super special, especially uh, after all this crew's been through. So that was really awesome. It's probably my favorite memory. I'd have to agree with them too. That was that was dope. And last question: If you're a head coach and you're running a team, you're picking a roster. Are you picking Rob Gronkowski as your tight end? Or are you taking me? Be smart about this. <laughs> I gotta rock with my boy. I right, appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> dope. Thank you guys, and thanks to Element Fencing again and uh, BNN for making this all possible. Appreciate you guys. All right, there you go. And we found a way to make that work. I have a new way to do that. So maybe now we can try with the uh, the uh, Rob Gronkowski video again if I upload it uh, this way instead of uh, that way. Uh, maybe we'll have some success here in a minute. But uh, how about that? DJ Shram, Riley Smith, their final games today as Broncos. George Halani as well. You got Garrett Curran. Uh, you go down the line. A lot of these guys, Billy Bowens. I mean, they, Boise State has some guys with COVID now that have been here six years and you feel like you know these guys or, you know, and you get to know them. And, and six years is just so much time and five years for George Helani and some of these other guys. Um, it's got to be the emotions waking up for the final time, uh, you know, knowing when they get on that bus, it's the final bus ride of their college career. And for a lot of these guys, the last game of their football career. I mean, DJ Shram didn't come out and say it, but he's looking for engineering jobs. This is probably the last time DJ Shram ever puts on the pads uh, again. Riley Smith, he wants to keep playing, but who knows what's going to happen with his injuries and stuff. Um, George Helani, I know, wants to try to keep playing, but there's a real chance some of these guys are never going to play football again. And you've played your entire life. It helped you get a college degree and helped you get a college scholarship. And you think about all the hours and years that these players put in, their families put in, taking them to practice, and all the years uh, that uh, these guys in, in hours and blood, sweat, and tears. And they wake up today, and right now, this is literally the final game day of their life. Uh, it is just crazy to think about. And um, it's super, uh, super uh, exciting for these guys, but I think super bittersweet as well and, and a little sad. So I think these guys are motivated. And uh, you think about George Jelani, and Mike Prater wrote an awesome column on him. I hope you guys go check that out at uh, bronconationnews.com and just the legacy of George Jelani and all the different offensive coordinators, all the different quarterbacks, all the different players that have come through and the staple that has been George Jelani. And I know the injuries have hurt him a little bit in his career. Um, but uh, you just think about what George Jelani means to this program, what a lot of these players mean to this program. Um, it, it is uh, crazy and for those guys just to think about the final games of their career. So hopefully they can all stay healthy. Hopefully they can play well. And uh, certainly looking forward to seeing uh, how all that goes. I think I've got the video with Rob Gronkowski queued up again. I think I fixed it. So let's hear from Rob Gronkowski on Boise State and uh, his race against Blitz. What are you thinking about that? Let's hear that here on Bronco Nation News. Bronco, a lot of us came from Boise here. We heard you out there pick Boise State. Tell us about your thoughts on Boise State and yeah, Boise. And actually, yeah, that was my first pick of the week, actually, uh, for the L.A. Bowl, Boise State, UCLA. And uh, that was actually the first time someone asked me who's going to win the game. 
and I picked Boise State right, right on the spot. So I think Boise State's going to win. They've had a solid season to finish it off. UCLA, they're kind of one of my rivals, you know. I went to Arizona, so I can't pick UCLA. Even though they might win, I just can't pick them. But uh, I like their program. I like Chip Kelly, a great head coach. I faced him before um, in the NFL and also in college. So it's great to see him leading the way on UCLA and uh, doing a good job turning the program around. Uh, since he, you know, he went there a couple a couple years ago, uh, it was kind of disastrous when he took over. So, but Boise State overall, you guys got great football tradition. You got the blue turf. Uh, you guys beat Oklahoma in the bowl game so many years ago back. I remember that to the T. Uh, so it's just great to have both schools here. Boise State with a great football tradition. UCLA with a great football tradition as well, being right around the corner. So just thank you guys, both teams, for coming here and uh, participating in all the activities the LA Bowl offers as well. Um, being here at this school as well, showing the kids the way, bringing players here, being a great example out in the public. So it's really cool to see. Your, uh, your good friend Shane McClellan lives in Idaho. I talked to him today. He said that his neck still hurts from the battles you guys used to have oh my, in practice. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Shea. Yes, he has some neck problems. He was a great player. Unfortunately, injuries derail some guys. Uh, derails everyone, actually, if you play the game of football, especially at a high level and many years in the NFL. And, uh, yes, we battled a lot in practice. We went after it. He made me a better player, that's for sure. Uh, and I, hopefully I made him a better player too because we used to battle nonstop and practice him, Ninkovich, a couple of the other guys. So it's good to hear about him. You know, it's good to hear that he's still telling people that, you know, it was me that injured his neck because that it gives me some credit, you know, some street credit in the NFL. But uh, he was a great player and uh, he helped us a lot with the Patriots as well. Did he go to uh, Boise State? State? I didn't even know that. So that's a, f a fun fact I just learned right there. Hopefully. He comes to the game. The LA Bowl, is he coming? Shea coming to the I, game? I don't think he's coming, but well, he's going to watch from, from afar. All right. Well, Shea, what's up, man? Thank you for the battles. Thank you for, you know, making me a better player out there on the practice field. And uh, thank you for helping us out, win some games uh, in the New England organization with the Patriots. Well, Brad, what are you more excited about uh, singing the national anthem or racing the Boise State? Yes. Uh, I'm more excited to race the dog because that's what I do. I like to do physical things, even though... I kind of showed my not athleticism out there. The kids told me to dunk. I went for a dunk, got rejected by the rim. But then I told the kids, hey, it's not about how many times you fail. It's about how many times you get up. So I got back up, grabbed the ball, and I dunked it on the second dunk. So that's what it's all about. I'm excited to race Blitz. Uh, is he your mascot? or but The T-Dog runs, runs out and grabs the T and then runs dog. Yeah. I got a dog, too. I love my dog. So when I heard that I had a chance to race another dog, and let me tell you, it's going to be a tough opponent. I mean, he's kind of like one of the medium taller dogs, skinnier. Let me tell you, those are the fastest dogs out. But it's all right. I'm going to bring my best. I'm going to try and distract Blitz as well. That's my technique. You can tell him as much as you want that I'm going to try to distract him. I don't think he's going to listen to you guys. I know these dogs. I got a dog. They don't really listen that well, especially when they're racing. They just want to go full speed and, you know, run all over the place. So hopefully I get a win. And hopefully the crowd goes crazy once I beat Blitz. Right, I've been beaten guys. once, so. Yes, well, I'm going to beat him again. Well, not again. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to be the second person to ever beat him. All right, we're there you go. Some trash talking from Rob Grankowski uh, at the uh, LA Bowl. Johnny, we got record viewership on here. So we can, uh, Johnny's just in the background uh, hanging out watching. But we got, uh, for a pregame show, well over 200 people now watching this. We truly appreciate uh, all you guys. Hopefully you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's just uh, youtube.com slash Bronco Nation News. So if you're able to uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, uh, we would certainly appreciate that. We're trying to build a YouTube channel here. If you are watching on uh, Facebook or Twitter, we ask you to uh, switch over to YouTube and start watching our broadcast there. We do this every game day, uh, sometimes in the morning, sometimes right before the game. Uh, the basketball games will be right before, and we will be back tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow at Extra Mile Arena, 2 o'clock basketball game tomorrow against uh, Fullerton, I believe. And uh, we land about 1230, and then we'll try to get over there and get a quick show uh, before the game. So uh, every pregame, every postgame, we'll have interviews, analysis, uh, highlights, all kinds of stuff on the postgame show as well. We'll be right after, uh, and we're not ending the show. I'm just throwing this out there, that uh, we will be uh, – live at uh, SoFi Stadium on the post-game show after uh, after this one tonight with some interviews, some thoughts, and wrapping up the season. Maybe a little later start if Boise State is celebrating and we're doing some interviews on the field and things like that. But uh, obviously, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll get you a full post-game show at some point as soon as we can here, and obviously a lot to, uh, lot to discuss and a lot to uh, 
break down the the 2023 season will be officially in the books uh, about uh, 10 hours from now. So uh, crazy to believe how fast football season goes. I, I remember like it was yesterday we were down in L.A. or excuse me, down in Las Vegas at Mountain West Media Days. And you're at Media Days and we're talking to Andy Avalos and we're previewing the season and here we are today, the last day of the football season. So the coverage won't stop. We'll have a signing day coverage next week. We'll have uh, off-season recruiting coverage, winter workouts. And then before you know it, spring ball will be here uh, in March. But uh, it is uh, certainly a, uh, you know, it's a uh, crazy to believe, a crazy thought that this is the end of the uh, 2023 football season here on a uh, December 16th. And uh, by the way, it's my mom's birthday. Happy Happy birthday and uh, to uh, Sally Rains. Uh, love you, Mom, and uh, happy birthday to you. Johnny looks like he's itching to get back in here. I can't uh, tell what he's what he's doing over here, but uh, there he is. We'll bring Johnny back in. Johnny, yeah, you just I, can't, I, you just can't stay away, man. We appreciate. I'm you. just sitting here watching. First off, what a what a great. I didn't see that that comment that Gronk had regarding Shea McClellan. That's big stuff, man. That's powerful stuff. That that shows the bond. Uh, of football right there but i just wanted to come in and you were talking about next year a little bit and you know kind of like just figuring like just a quick little exercise just go through right now bj what do you think like the week one starters will be for this team next year like the offensive line just start right there i mean what mason randolph at center you got carry on and Dooley at guards you have Casey at left tackle. So really, yeah. you come into next year with a rock solid offensive line, right? And I don't know what I they'll do Ethan with right. Carr, I think Ethan Card, I still think the transfer has a year left as well, I believe. Um, or you go, go to the sweat. portal. Or you go to the portal to find an experienced right tackle, right? Bottom line, yeah. though, the offensive line looks loaded coming in next year for Ashton Genty and Breezy Dubar. Um, you'll see what happens at quarterback. I think they'll bring somebody in, but it'll, you know, mad dog tiller, whoever comes in and then look at the, the tight ends led by Matt louder. I think you'll like that group. And then the receivers, Prince strong, Austin bolt, right? You get Latrell Caples back. I mean, if those are your three plus some guys behind them, trying to, uh, trying to get some reps though, if guys like Penry come back, right. I mean, you just look at offensively. Bush has uh, so many tools back in this thing, and and you would think that uh, they'd be pretty pretty strong contenders coming in next year. What do you, what do you think? I mean, that seems like a pretty you know people can comment on it too. That seems like a pretty nice deck, a stack yeah. deck coming back on offense, right? Well, I mean, I I would and I would turn the page, and I would th I thought you were going to start with the defense. I'll turn the page and start with the defense too. I mean, they Go. lose DJ, they lose DJ Shram, they lose. Uh, Dimitri Washington, and there's only one other guy on the D-line that I'm, I'm forgetting who they lose. But, I mean, they literally bring back almost their, you know, nine, ten starters on defense. You lose Cortez Hogan's, I guess, you know, on the edge. Yep. But you bring back Rodney Robinson. You bring back Shale Adipo. You bring back uh, Alexander Tudner. You bring back uh, Amarian McCoy. You bring back uh, who Benefield. else? Benefield. Uh, you bring Benefield Ty 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 somewhere. Benefield. You bring back uh, Canejo. You bring back Markel Reed. You bring back uh, I'm forgetting JC? another. Yeah, Clark? Jalen Clark is back. Uh, Andrew Simpson is back. Marco Notriani is back. Michael okay. Callahan is back. Herbert Gums is back. Sheldon Newton is back. Uh, all these guys on the D line are back. I mean, depending on how you look at it, I mean, you bring back nine, ten starters on defense, and you bring back. You know, a pretty good amount on offense as well. I mean, I know the schedule is going to be really tough, Johnny, and I'm sure we'll have all off season on the off season ball talk edition to kind of really dive into this. Um, but you think about this, this, this team next year, man. Again, I know the schedule is a little tough going to Oregon, but Spencer Danielson, man, this thing is set up for some immediate success next year. And I do not think it's crazy to think the goal next year should be getting in that 12 team playoff. I'd, I'd feel way better about that if they had like an old school Chris Peterson era Boise State schedule where you have one home run opportunity in the non-con, and then after that you're going to be heavily favored in every game. And that was the By case the way, in Hassan, a lot of years. I forgot to mention. Sorry, I'm Ahmed Hassanin's back as well. We forgot to mention him. Yeah, the the probably the, the best player Mountain on West, the defense. Probably the Mountain West preseason player of the year in Vegas next year for media days. Ashton Genty is the Mountain West preseason offensive player of the year and james ferguson reynolds is the preseason special teams player of the year i mean i think that's a sweep 
in the awards. It never ends up being like that in Vegas, but those are three strong cases. You have to give it to Genty. And Hassanin, you know, you you'd think the returning sack guy. I don't know what's up with the with the Kamara from from CSU, what he's going to do. But yeah, I mean, coming into this year, um, the only the only roadblock for me is that non-con, and that's going to be tough. I mean, if they don't make the playoffs, say they win the Mountain West, but they get bypassed from the American champion or a thirteen and zero Liberty situation coming from Conference USA, something like that. That's going to be a tough pill to swallow and maybe a lesson on the on the non-con philosophies i love playing those big time teams early on bj covering these big matchups so i'm excited about that but yeah going into next year with how we've detailed this and we didn't get to special teams we know fergie's back maybe you get dolmas back too and then all of a sudden like dude you are ready to go next year outside. Maybe, maybe at quarterback, you're not completely satisfied, but you see what happens at that position. Right. But I think you're okay yeah. with mad dog or tiller. If he ends up taking the gig or whoever they bring in, I don't think that's a major, uh, you know, a major negative going into the season at all. Um, and you want to have BJ, the experienced team, right? going into those mega non-cons, right? These guys will have played in big games, like not saying they're going to win all of them or whatnot, but yeah, Boise State, this roster, BJ, I would be so hard-pressed for someone to come to me and present me a group of five team going into next year with a better situation than Boise State. I'd be shocked. Hey, I will take all comers, you guys. I'm sure you will too, BJ. What other great yeah. group of five teams? Maybe we put Chris Vanini on this. He's kind of the group of five guy over there at the Athletic, BJ. But no question, I think Boise State going into next year looks locked and loaded, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think it's that crazy. I, I think that that's 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 got to be the realistic goal, right? I mean, and the, and I think all off season now, like these players, Johnny, like before it was kind of a pipe dream, or whatever. But like now, you literally know you win your conference and you're the best group of five team. You are in the college football playoff. You get to go play at Alabama or at yep. you know somebody in this you know in this tournament. And I think just that whole off season for fans, for media, but for those players and coaches, like that is now a attainable goal. And I think boy, it sets up perfectly, Johnny, in the first year of the playoff. Boise State has a loaded roster, and I don't know if it's it's not. You know, I was gonna say it's funny. It's not funny, but how many times did Andy Avalos continue to remind us how young they were on defense? And he kept I saying, "Hey, that too. He, I thought we're about young, that. we're young, we're young, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're gonna be there." And and now, kind of what he's saying is paying off at the end of this year with guys stepping up. But certainly going into next year, all these guys that Andy Avalos, uh, you know, developed and and the things he was looking at for the future. Uh, I don't want to say Spencer Danielson's reaping those rewards because he obviously was very involved in the defense yeah. and very involved in these guys too. But it the roster, I mean, Spencer Danielson has taken over a pretty nice situation here moving it's forward. It's beautiful. Yeah, and and the last couple of years, I don't know if there's a team that has that much experience coming back, not just the experience, but like star power coming back and guys like Genty who's going to take this country by storm. I can't wait just for the Genty off season in this town, fans are going to be fired up to watch this team play. BJ, we've been covering this team, you know, 10, 12 years or so. I don't remember a home schedule like next year in 2024. I mean, there's no complaints with the home schedule. I mean, this is going to be rock and roll. Those are Chick Dickie's going to have concerts. He's going to have all this cool stuff going on. Those home games are going to be events next year especially with the opponent coming in which has always been a big draw for people in this town they get tired of seeing the normal uh, conference teams and then not any big time non-con opponents coming in that's not going to be the case even in the league right they switch the schedule up a little bit you were saying you get a san diego state game that you wouldn't have had before uh, it's going to be, and I'm not trying just to get everybody excited for BNN and KTIK. Like, uh, it's going to be a really exciting off season detailing as we did everybody coming back and the coaches and kids want to stay and we'll see what they can add in the portal and maybe hit a true freshman who comes in and helps like a Benefield did or something this year. BJ, there's a lot to be excited. Maybe that's part of the reason Jeremiah Dickey went with Spencer Danielson too. He just saw what he had. This group is ready to go. Totally agree, man. Totally agree. Yeah. And I think it's going to be an exciting finish to the uh, exciting look ahead. But Johnny, I think that all does. I know one game doesn't mean anything. It's been a heck of a season no matter what. But I do think the hype and all the interest certainly would be higher and if they find a way to win this game today. 
I think they're going to win their seven point dogs. That's that, that, that again, that, that, that's a very interesting deal for me. That perplexes me, BJ. I, I don't see the spread there, but uh, Hey, uh, those guys know a lot more than we do with this UCLA, a, a, not a heavy favorite, but a, but a decent favorite. If you're favored by a touchdown, you're a pretty good favorite Vegas, pretty, pretty confident that they are going to win the game, especially if they're going to offer, what is it? Plus 200 on the Boise state money line. That's again yeah. saying Boise state's not going to win this thing. Um, I think they will. Uh, I think they're ready for this game. And I don't know if UCLA will be as ready if that, if, if that is a thing, man, we'll see, but uh, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting tonight. It kind of sucks. It's the last game. I get it. I heard you talking about football season college football season, you get Labor Day to basically Thanksgiving for your regular season, and that goes by so fast. And then here you are in a bowl game, and hopefully for Bronco Nation, they win this bowl game, and then you just jump right into next year really excited about the 2024 team and maybe can do some special, some special things. I wanted to ask you one thing because remember when we talked with Sanford, and this was after the Washington game, and Sanford was saying, you know what, Boise State, that might be the best opponent you've played since. Uh, I can't remember who he used as his reference point, but it was like 10 years. He was like, that Virginia might be the Tech best. Somebody maybe? It might have been. Somebody like that. And um, he was right. Washington went undefeated. They're in the playoff. I mean, that type of deal. I don't know if Boise State, you could answer this maybe. Have they ever played – a team in the regular season that ended up going to the CFP. I don't I think, think so. I mean, Washington has only the been first around. One. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think, I think so. Washington's the yeah. first one, which is a pretty cool footnote too, but yeah, Sanford nailed that one. I mean, uh, but that, that will be the type if of they played again. If they, if they would have had Taylor green, like that team that went into the championship game two weeks ago with Taylor green, if they played Washington again, I don't think it's 56-7 or whatever it was. No, no, it's not. And they would have known more what to do, I think, with Genty, a healthy Genty. You just would they have wouldn't have won, but it might have been a little more competitive. Yeah, yeah, I would. I thought it would have been a little more competitive. But no, they wouldn't. They're not. They're, this team's not going to beat the Washington Huskies. They played, they played 10 times. Washington probably wins nine and a half of them, right? I mean, they're, they're a CFP I mean, dude, team. I mean it, it sounds crazy, but like, like, like next year, we legitimately right now could be talking about Boise State going into uh going into Clemson or going into Alabama or going into Texas for the 12 versus 5 game in the first round yep. of the college football playoff like that's a legitimate real scenario and I would love it at BNN man we we we've ridden the basketball teams wave the last couple of years winning the Mountain West and getting to the big dance football season obviously the last month has been crazy but it'd be great for KTIK and BNN man if they could make a run at the at the tournament next year, you know how you know how how um, <clears throat> demanding ticket packages would be for that game because it would be on campus somewhere. Say it's Boise State at Notre Dame, right? It's Notre Dame. You know, it's probably the only time you're ever going to play Notre Dame. Could you imagine that travel package to South Bend in uh, early? What, 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 what that game would be? What early? I don't know. When are they going to do the tournament? About right now because they have to yeah, finish it. Yeah. Yep. So it would be about right now when the tournament, this time next year, the tournament will start about this week on this day. You'll have it might be, teams. yeah, this week or the next That's day. Yeah, it's so right fun, now. dude. What if they go to, you, could so go to, fun. you could go to Texas. What if they go to Oklahoma uh, on a rematch there from the Fiesta Bowl? And there's so oh, many storylines. Rematch in Norman. The, I, BJ, I, these storylines, right? Could you imagine if that happened, if it was in Norman? You know, Boise State fans would want to go. You get, what, 3,000, 4,000 seats? And that's the for the that. visiting team, but that would and be a it, it sounds crazy though, Johnny, but it's really not. Like, I mean, that is a real scenario for next year's team. All you have to do is be a conference champion and you just have to beat the other conference champions. I mean, I think right now, maybe not now because of the quarterback situation, Johnny, but like if you would on, on selection Sunday two weeks ago, you would have taken Boise State against any of those other group of five champions. I think Boise State might have even been favored against Liberty if they had played, you know, back in Taylor. Absolutely, Green was they'd be so, favored against I, Liberty. I, you, you, yes. couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't pick them with five losses. I get it. But overall, like in terms of how teams were playing, Boise State was would, would have beaten any of those group of five champions on you know two weeks ago, and so uh, and that's with how bad their season went this year. You put together a, a ten and two type season next year, where your only loss is at Oregon, maybe and somewhere else. I mean, I, I think it's a Real possibility, and that's why it's going to be so exciting in this offseason. But I do think a win tonight against UCLA would certainly 
propel that. You'd have nine months, Johnny, talking about Spencer Danielson still being undefeated as head coach. You'd have all the momentum of this win. You can ride that all spring, summer, fall. Uh, it would be uh, it would be awesome. Now, if they lose, I mean, it, it would be a tough way to finish the season, a tough way for guys like DJ Shram to go out, but it's not obviously the end of the world. It's funny, Johnny. They say when you win a bowl game, it propels you and gives you that motivation. When you lose a bowl game, they say, oh, it fired us up and gave us that extra chip all offseason. So, I mean, you can spin it however yep. you want, you know, when you get to a bowl game. Uh, but certainly uh, a win, I do think, would, would really help the momentum. I mean, if they win this game, are they in the top 25 to start next year? I was thinking that I was thinking, are they in the top 25 AP preseason next year at 24 25? If people dissect the roster and, and, and smart college football people will know they have Ashton Genty, right? That might be one of those things like that's the best running back in America is playing at Boise State. They have all these guys coming back and maybe they sneak in to the, to the preseason top 25. They have not been ranked BJ since 2020, I believe. Andy Avalos was never ranked at one point in his era. And this is a program that was ranked every single year from 2002 to 2020. At one point in the season, they were ranked every year. Go find the other teams that can say they're on that list. There's hardly any. I don't know if there's another team that can say they were ranked every year for all those years. I'm going to go through. I, I love this exercise. I'm going to go through the offense one more time. And then I want okay, you yeah, to go I, through I did and then of, I want I, did, I want you I, uh, to go through the defense over. position position sure. by position. Okay, on offense, returning next year you're hoping week 1. Mason Randolph is your center, Roger Carrion and Ben Dooley are your guards, Cade Bearsford and as of now Ethan Card are your tackles. Uh, Maddox Stop Madsen's right there. It, Stop right there on the on the O-line for a second. That's that's all guys that have started, Cage Casey started every game at left tackle this year. Randolph is an all Mountain West type center that is, you know, was injured and came back and has played center and guard. Ben Dooley is a guy that'll be here in his sixth year and has been an all Mountain West player like three years ago. Yes, so you're, yeah, not, second you're not team just, all league. Yep, you're not just naming guys. You're naming like all Mountain West type offensive linemen right there. And Roger Carrion came in as a freshman and did a very nice job until some of the injured guys came back. So I mean, you're talking about four guys there that are solid players for an offensive line, Johnny, that was actually pretty darn good this year. So Really good. Uh, this was I, a I really just, good I, offensive I, line. I just didn't want to skip over that. You're, you're, you're naming yeah. names, but you're not just naming names. You're naming four all-Mountain West caliber offensive linemen right there coming back. And Ethan Card played a lot this year, and I still think right tackle might be something that they look at with the portal, that type of situation. Yeah, the offensive line going into next year is loaded. Mad Dog at quarterback, tons of experience there. You have the best back in America in Ashton Genty, who will be the absolute focal point of Bush Hamden's offense. You like the development of Breezy Dubar to be a guy who can get you seven, eight hundred total scrimmage yards as an RB2 and then receivers get Latrell Capels back your best receiver now two years ago Austin Bolt's development Prince Strawn's development guys like Penry who played a lot this year um, Cole Wright still in the building I believe uh, Ben Ford coming up other guys they're going to bring in BJ I like the receivers and Matt Lauder Matt Lauder is a terrific uh, option at tight end. He's had a great year, I thought, Matt Lauder. You have him coming back too. That's the offense that you're looking at for your week one opportunity. We're, we're week one next year at what, Georgia Southern, correct? The team that's playing right now. That's your starting offense going into Georgia. What's the defense? Well, I mean, we the defense is uh, your entire secondary is back. Rodney Every, Robinson. No, no, no. Play my game, man. Start with the D-line. Go position by position, Reigns. Come on. All right. So we got uh, Michael Callahan, Herbert Gums there on the interior. You got Ahmed Hassanin, Jaden Virgin, probably on the other side. Uh, but I mean, Callahan and Hassanin right there and, and Gums. I mean, that's a quite the defensive line to start with. You mentioned Hassanin maybe being preseason player of the year uh, in the conference. Um, and then you've got Andrew Simpson and Marco Notriani at linebacker. Not Love bad. It. You got Deshaun Misa, Deshaun Misa mixing in there as well, four-star guy they like, some other guys there. And then at corner, you got Amari and McCoy back who came in from JUCO and did a really, really nice job this year. The, the, the secondary, yeah. I, you know, We love Markel Reed, but the secondary and the corner position specifically started getting a little better once they started giving McCoy uh, more playing time over there at, at, uh, at corner. 
Um, and so you've got Jalen Clark also, who has stepped into a starting role this year and played really, really well. You got McCoy and Clark back. Some people might look at this and say, okay, great. The secondary struggled this year. They're all, you know, they, maybe some of the fans wish some of these guys were, were moving on, but uh, all these guys getting a year of experience, all these guys coming back. You got McCoy and Clark, and then you got behind them Reed and Canijo both back as well. Two solid backups and, and guys Four that are going to make you like. Yep. Yeah. And then you <laughs> yep. go to the second day, you go to the secondary and you have Shea Oladipo. Uh, you've got Rodney Robinson and you've got Alexander Tubner mixing in there. Those guys are, you know, three guys that are all veteran guys. Tubner has said he's coming back. So, I mean, we're talking what, and you mentioned special teams too. With I don't know about Dalmas. We, I talked to him the other day. I, he's, he's not got sure. He got a decision to make. Uh, I, I think he does love playing with uh, Ferguson Reynolds, though, and Hutton and all these guys, and I think that he likes Come back uh, and break Taylor the Rasta. all-time field goal yeah. record in NCAA history. Go to the College Football Hall of Fame if you, you had to get All-American on there, but I get what you're saying. Throw in Ty Benefield. Like, what's yeah. going to happen? Does he start over tubes next year? Is Benefield just so good that he's going to bypass the talent of a Tubner or Rodney Robinson? Ty Benefield yeah. has to play, and he has to play a lot, BJ, to me, he might be the most gifted player on this defense, uh, certainly for a guy going into his true sophomore year next year. Benefield's going to have to play somewhere. I don't, I don't know how they're I – mean, it's a good problem to have, right? I mean, what do you do with Ty Benefield? Just kind of a, a nickel makes perfect sense, but Shea oladipo has got that. Do you put Shea Oladipo back at safety? Do you move Tubner? Possibly – I always thought Tubner would be a good nickel but the problem is, is the nickel often has to cover the slot receiver. And yeah, that's I don't want to put strength. Tubner in a situation yeah. with some serious athlete playing in the slot. That's a tough cover for Tubes, but he's terrific in the running game. As we know, Tubner's going to play a ton, but Benefield has to find a spot in there too. BJ, the defense, I love Notriani and Simpson at backer. You detailed the, the defensive line too. I mean, there's really, I mean, I, I mean, I, the biggest weakness, what, corner? Because I know guys are back, but there's no all league player there. Possibly, I, I I don't know, but I I do like those corners. I think they got better throughout the season, and and they have so, a whole off season to 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 uh to improve too. So let's flip it the other way. How many starters are gone? You have Cade Beresford, so you lose a starter on the O line. You lose Billy Bowens, a starter at wide receiver. Uh, you Riley lose, Smith. Like, Riley Smith is your starter at tight end. So are they? Um. I don't. I guess at quarterback, you have to say they lost a starter because because you know even if you bring back Madsen, he didn't start half the games. Uh, so you lose your starting quarterbacks. I mean that's four starters you lose on offense, but you bring back seven there. Defense, you lose DJ Shram. Are any other guys considered starters that you lose on defense? You lose DJ uh, Shram. Defense, um, I don't know if Dimitri Washington can be counted a starter. He was hurt pretty much all season. He um, was right. I mean, I mean, you'll miss him uh, in a lot of areas. A guy like Hogan's, I guess. I, I don't know how many games he started. I mean, I, we'll just say nine. We'll, we'll combine Hogan's and, and Washington. I guess we'll say nine starters back on defense. You got seven on offense. That's sixteen of your twenty-two back on the two deep. Um, they're going to be one of the more experienced teams around. It's going to be a lot of fun. George yeah, Jelani is a loss. George Jelani is a loss. Somebody said George Jelani. Um, yeah, I'm I mean, excited is, for Breezy to be RB2 also, though, too. And George, George Helani wasn't available all year, right? I mean, another year of Helani would have been outstanding, but you're probably saying another year of Helani means seven games. Uh, as much yeah. as I love George, I mean, he just hasn't been able to put uh, a lot of those together. He's had a couple seasons where he hasn't been hurt, and good for him, and I can't wait to see George tonight. I think he's going to ball out, but just as excited to see Breezy be RB2, learn from Genty. Uh, there's not one position where a, a player is going to come in with like hardly any experience, right? All those players we mentioned for next year played a lot this year. They were lettermen, if you will, right? They, they had yeah. a lot of football that they played. Now, here's another thing, and this is total nitpicking, but can in the early 2000s when I started watching Boise State, BJ, they were electric in the return game, especially the punt return game. Guys like Chris Carr, guys like Tim Gilligan, like these early era guys, and then they just kept going. Like they were always so, so tough, so sneaky on special teams. You know, is there a guy out there, I'm trying to think of a player on a team that can just make people miss and get them back there returning punts or kicks. I've always thought I, I wanted to see Austin Bolt return a kick, not a punt, but a kick and get that speed going. Um, maybe they can do something in the return game. I would like to see them as far as areas of improvement, BJ, 
get better in the in the kick return game. Kick returns, punt returns. They didn't get yeah. anything out of that this year. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. We got to wrap this up, Johnny. Appreciate everybody for uh, checking us out and watching us. Uh, great viewership on a game day. Any, any final thoughts on the way out the door, Johnny? Uh, Boise State, UCLA, Chip Kelly, Spencer Danielson, uh, SoFi Stadium. I mean, it's going to be fun today, man. Yeah, I got 24 to 20 if you're doing predictions. Boise State wins this game, 24-20. And uh, uh, hopefully, uh, I know people will be watching your post game. It'll be awesome. I got my post game with Prater, uh, Bronco Game Night. Look that up. We'll be doing that too. And uh, celebrate uh, celebrate a season uh, like no other, PJ. This season finally ends this year. PJ, quarterback controversies, competitions, coaches fired, like historic losses, Hail Marys. I call that the Hell Mary, not the Hail Mary, because it was hell for Bronco Nation. And then the transfer portal, I just, it's crazy, man. It, went, it has been oh, a, a, a fun year, a fun year. Fun year, weird year, and uh, it, it is crazy that we're here in Los Angeles getting ready to finish the season with the L.A. Bowl today. Boise State, UCLA, again, uh, Johnny mentioned uh, the post-game show. Make sure you listen to him and Prater. Uh, you guys will be on before me, so that's a perfect idea. Listen to Johnny and Prater. Uh, is that on the AM side, 670 KBOI on the post-game show with Johnny and Prater? And then uh, you'll be able to uh, flip over and turn on BNN after they're done. And we'll have our post game showing with some injury. Uh, yeah, I almost said injuries with some interviews with all kinds of things. Hopefully, hopefully uh, think about the video, John, think about the moment. Rob Gronkowski finishing this season, handing a championship belt to Spencer Danielson on the stage <laughs> uh, to wrap up the 2023 season. It would be quite hey, the scene. Hey. Make sure you get footage of Gronk versus Blitz. Detailed footage, BJ. That's that would right. be like 30,000 hits for you. Make I can't sure go you're back on to the, uh, snack. I can't go back to the, the snack bar at halftime. I got to stay out there and get the video of Blitz and Rob. That Rankowski. stadium's huge, too. It probably takes you a half hour to get from the press box to the field. It, it's really nice, huh? Elevators. What's the press area like, man? It was pretty cool. We'll they just hook it up. Allegiant Stadium had the nicest meal, you know, press meal that I had seen too. So we'll see if it's nice here at SoFi Stadium. What they have? Not a huge fan have? of the. Uh, oh, we don't need to get into that, Johnny. It was a nice meal, all right. But uh, um, it was uh, any any place that has the fountain sodas. You know, if you have the fountain drinks and if you have Diet Dr Pepper, you're that's a win in my book. That's why I love Watson, Utah State. Watson, box, man, right? you, Oregon right. hooks up the press more than anybody I've been to. Like, I think we had prime rib one night at Watson. It's crazy, bro. But Oklahoma yeah, Oklahoma State enjoy one it. year had uh, ribs. They had barbecue and they played. <laughs> at Oklahoma State. I was eating ribs pregame. Some of those uh, schools hook it up, man. It, the food is amazing. You're going out back for seconds and thirds. Then they bring the cookies and brownies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. Uh, Johnny, good though. stuff. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny uh, knows when the cookies and brownies are coming, and he'll go like they don't do it anymore. No, because remember got, when the, they, they used to do it oh. for halftime, but everybody would sneak back there at the end of the first quarter and get them, and there wouldn't even be any left at halftime. But uh, yeah. Media, that is the one thing the media gets sometimes we get a free meal it's not it's not bad but uh looking forward to it again it is yeah super crazy yeah. And i think well, it'd, thanks, be the, it'd be the it'd be the perfect most fitting way to end the 2023 season for cj tiller to ball out and for rob Gronkowski to hand spencer danielson the belt on the stage with the confetti falling it's going to be fun to see fun to watch looking forward to it and again make sure you listen to johnny and prater on their post game show on, who's uh, your mvp PCOI. offense and defense bj gotta be it's gotta be, you it's gotta be gentry. it's gotta be gentry gentry, offense man. who's defense yeah, it's gotta be yeah it's gotta right. be it's gotta be gentry and uh let's go uh let's go dj shram his final game nice DJ Shram right. steps up, falls out. I think he gets a fumble recovery or something, has eight or nine tackles. Let's go, DJ Shram. Uh, and again, I'll they'll say, have post game. Go for it. I'll Johnny. say a Marion McCoy. He'll get a pick six. A McCoy will get defensive player of the game on a really key pick six. Pick six for Marion McCoy. Wow, wouldn't that be something? Should be fun. Appreciate you, Johnny. Thank you guys for checking us out. Go subscribe. Go uh, sign up to our YouTube channel as well. We'd love to have you. Bronco Nation News. Again, thanks to Row Painting. Thanks to all of our great sponsors. We'll send you out with uh, Gronk's dance moves once more. Have a great uh, day. Enjoy the game. And we'll talk to you guys on the post-game show. Go subscribe. Bronco Nation News. BroncoNationNews.com.
Five, four, three, two, one.